Hey everyone, this is Pig for Life, and in today's Transformers review, we'll be taking an early look at a pre production sample of DX9's Carrie and his little Target Master, whose name I still haven't been able to figure out, <laughs> and uh, their take on the masterpiece Ronimus and uh, Firebolt, respectively. Alright, so since this is a pre production sample, let's go ahead and get away with the disclaimers. So, this is uh, not a final version. Things are going to change before the final release. Uh, I know that they're still working on some design changes, especially this fire uh, emblem on the front, which they put a poll up on um, their Facebook page, I believe. But yeah, so we'll skip packaging review and go straight into robot mode review. So as you can see, the carry figure here is definitely a masterpiece scale um, version of Rodimus Prime and not Hot Rod. And you can see he's very uniquely designed. He's definitely a take on the Studio Ox version or style of Transformers. And I've personally never really liked that, but some people love the Studio Ox design. It's a more um, traditional, I guess, anime look to it than the original G1 cartoon that we saw in the US. And some people like that, some people don't. It's going to be a personal thing. So for me, I grew up with the USG1 cartoon, and Studio Ox doesn't do a lot for me personally. It doesn't have that nostalgia feel. But that's not to say that DX9 hasn't done a phenomenal job on this figure. So as we did a quick 360, um, you can see a lot of different um, aesthetics that are unique to this guy. So again, there is a very, very heavy influence on um, this figure from Studio Ox. The kind of forward-facing wheels, which are, are very indicative of that. The black fists that you see here. Um, the bigger kind of like legs. Even just like the detailing. Uh, this part here, the, the, the wings are much more, um, I guess wider I don't know this is just a different angle instead of just the kind of spoilerish um, thing that we really traditionally see along the back you get the folded up um, I guess uh, tra trailer for the space Winnebago as people like to call it and uh, they haven't done a great job hiding it. it it's pretty compact which is great but you see a lot of the internal pieces which look kind of unfinished so it's kind of unfortunate you do get some paint details here. Again, this is a pre-production sample, so these paint details are probably going to be richer and uh, applied a lot more cleanly in the final version. The other thing is that he has a bit of a butt flap here. And I don't know if that's what you have to have with uh, kind of the season, um, season 2 cast um, or movie cast with Ultra Magnus also having the infamous butt flap. And there's some things that you can kind of do with it. You can kind of lift it up like this if you'd like and get that out of the way a little bit or you can kind of flip it around back something like this um, I would have loved if you could like have tucked it in up a little bit more into this back panel but unfortunately this uh, looks like the official transformation I don't have any instructions so uh, this is going off of the production images that we got some of the other things uh, I, I, I'm missing two actual tires from these wheels. Every single review I've seen of this pre-production sample that I'm going to have to review is, is missing at least one tire and I don't know why. It's just kind of funny but anyway. But otherwise he definitely is um, uh, definitely invokes the Rodimus look but again stylistically he's very different from what you might remember from your childhood cartoon. The last thing I'll say that kind of bothers me about this figure is just the proportions so his legs are really really thick at the calves he's got massive cankles not just from the front look view but from the side view as well and uh those portions kind of make it kind of odd so the thighs are kind of really thick and they kind of stick out from the hips which give it a kind of an odd look and then lastly his arms look a little stubby to me I don't know what I mean you can bring his shoulders down a little bit but his arms barely make it to his uh, hips or crotch 
I think they really should be a little bit further down to maybe mid thigh to make him not look um, kind, of, kind of oddly proportioned. So those are kind of my thoughts on the overall robot mode look. But uh, overall, he's still a really, really interesting design. Uh, DX9 and Unique Toys really do have their own kind of look. While it is, they're always going for kind of the masterpiece scale, they have a different kind of aesthetic, a lot of molded design and detail, and a different different um, look than just a traditional masterpiece, very cartoon, uh, loyal look. One of the things that is uh, really indicative of that is the face sculpt. So the face or head sculpt here, you can see it's a very serious look. But again, not not a real good representation of the cartoon, but nonetheless a really nicely molded. He has a really definitive chin that sticks out way more than um, the the Rodimus I remember. And his head is it feels like it's on a ball joint underneath there. It's on a ball joint underneath there on this post, so you can look all the way around. His head looks a little too small again. Uh, for me and the proportions so overall the proportions are just a little bit off um, in my opinion but yeah so that's really it for my take on robot mode review uh, before we go ahead and get into transformation let's do a quick set of comparisons the obligatory mp10 comparison so you can see MP10 is just a tad bit taller to the top of the head. Not much, but I think it scales incredibly well there. And proportion-wise, he's a little bit leaner than MP10, but I'm okay with that. Alright. And the other obligatory comparison will be with his uh, MP9. So this is the Takar version, as you can see with the uh, lighter uh, red color, kind of a maroonish color. So the proportions are definitely very different. The looks are very different. Again, this is more plain in the details, especially the molded details. Well, again, this has a lot of the molded details. Um, very um, indicative of the uh, DX9 unique toy style. Uh, overall, I think they look very well. They work very well together. I, I kind of have this uh, this version in his hot rod mode, but they're essentially going to be the same. Oh, actually, I think I might have him in his his legs and his yeah. It looks like I have his legs in. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought I might have had his hips in Rodimus mode, but it looks like this might be right. I always forget with this this figure how you're supposed to transform his hips to make it look. Oh yeah, so I was I was right. This is the the hot rod mode. So th this figure is probably a little bit too tall for hot rod, but um, probably a good height for Rodimus. Anyway, let's just get him out of the way. And before we go into um, transformation, let's take a quick look at Firebolt. And again, I don't, I don't know his uh, DX9 name. If somebody knows, please post it for me. I looked around for it, and again, I don't have instructions. So I'm just gonna call him Firebolt. So this Firebolt is very different than the one we got with um, the Hasbro version. And I was never really a fan of the Target Masters, to be perfectly honest. I always like the headmasters a lot more, but you and and you can see he's very different. Uh, I should have brought my Hasbro one out, but I actually sold that uh, a little while ago. So unfortunately, I don't have one for a comparison. But he does have some uh, overall same stylings and look as uh, Rodimus. He has these kind of wings. He also has cankles. But his proportions are actually a little bit better. Uh, as far as his articulation, he doesn't have any kind of head swivel or anything like that. He does have shoulders. He does have elbows. Ball joint. Doesn't have a waist swivel um, due to the way he is 
he transforms. Ball joints at his hips, give him a good range of motion there. Ball joint at the knees. And his foot is on a ball joint that is actually connected to the back of his um, his leg. So you get some range of motion and a, kind of a faux connection there. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and transform him real quick um, so we can see Rodimus holding him. You can take off these wings that are just pegged in. And I kind of like these wings on the front. If you're a Majinga Z fan, you can kind of get a Majinga look to him. Breast fire! Okay, enough goofing off. Uh, let's go ahead and take this off. He has a little gun, which you can actually use in a couple ways. Some people like to use it with the grip underneath. Using this peg, if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. He has a little peg on the underside of his arm, so you can kind of hold it like that. I kind of like using this weird squared peg as a handle. It's not really designed to do that, but it does fit. And you can kind of make it used as a bludgeon item or a not sharp sword. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Transformation is pretty simple. Let's scoot back a bit. Transformation is pretty simple. He splits down the middle and comes up like this so his head gets hidden. And up top, you have this little peg that kind of slots in here. Let's go, you can't just push it in. You're going to have to bend this up and slide in like so. And then uh, you get the handle. So this handle, really, this should be towards the back of the gun, this side here, based on the way the grips are. You have a little peg here, which you rotate the arm and peg into there. And then you kind of rotate this up to form the stock. Same thing on this side, rotate this. Get this in like that. And here, you're going to want to rotate this down. And then use this hinge to come all the way around. And this will peg in to the bottom peg here. There we go. And it looks pretty incomplete. And you're just going to go ahead and take this device, whatever it was, and you're going to use this tab to slot into the bottom here, as well as this peg in here going to that peg hole. Just press it on. And there you go. You can use this as a mighty long sniper rifle. Um, but due to how long it is, it's really hard for him to actually hold in position. Uh, in comparison to MP9's gun, which is actually a combination of his two smaller guns, it's actually quite a bit longer. But it's really just a straight piece. All this one has. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, that one has wings. This one has wings too. You have to go ahead and bring that back. These two back pieces, back wings, you just make use of these two peg holes there. Sorry about that. But yeah, now you can see it's much more um, similar, I guess, with those wings. I mean, not a whole bunch more, but you do have some color and detail. Some of the other transformations you can probably mess around with and do some fan modes. Uh, Piog did one where you can you he rotated this kind of around, and because this random peg here that has served no other purpose in either mode, he thought that if you rotate it around and use this peg on the bottom of the foot, you can make it kind of a shorter gun. And I don't know what you would do with this. I guess you can plug this in really pretty much anywhere like here or something, I don't know. Anyway, if you do that, then he can hold it and bend his arms. And it's kind of a cool blaster, I guess. But, I mean, for for all the, all the kind of neat transformations, the options you have with this, 
uh, it's kind of meh to me. It's kind of cool that they it's cool that they included it, but again, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Target Masters and Firebolt in particular. I didn't really care about. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much him. We'll put him off to the side for now, as well as MP9's gun. And uh, let's go ahead and get into um, articulation real quick. So we already did the head. His shoulders are on soft ratchets and he can beat himself in the head. If you get that out of the way, you can actually rotate this all the way up like that. Much better shoulders than um, the most of the um, Mass Race Rodimus who have randomly exploding shoulders. Version 2 of the Takara version um, isn't too bad, but all the other versions like the Hasbro in the first release have really bad shoulders. And you have nice ratcheted shoulders there. You have a kind of elbow swivel. You do have an elbow joint, elbow bend, not quite 90 degrees. His wrist swivel and his fingers, if you guys remember the last review I did. Who, who was the last review I did? I don't even remember now. Uh, oh, Tesla. Tesla had the same kind of hands in that you have the three... Oh, no, they're actually not. Never mind, just ignore what I'm saying. So the three fingers, the pinky, the ring, and the middle finger are all just one piece and hinged at the hand, while the trigger finger or pointer finger has two points of articulation and are pinned. So it's more like MP10's hand, actually. Especially since the thumb it doesn't have any articulation, so pretty much a copy of MP10's hands in that respect. Uh, let's see, he does have a waist swivel. The butt pack will get in the way a bit. The legs are friction joints, have a good range of motion forward and back. It's like he gets a little bit more back than forward, which is kind of odd. He does have ratchets going outwards like so. Pretty soft, but pretty sturdy as well. Nice satisfying click. Thigh swivel. Soft ratcheted knees that go back like so. And again, no exploding knees. This, these are very beefy, so you're not going to have to worry about the issues that some of the Rodimus had, or Hot Rods had. And his foot which is actually die cast, the, the toe is, is connected on a, um, a pin, it looks like, or a post, I can't really tell, that allows some ankle tilt both, t ankle tilt both inward and outward. You can go up, and you can, can go a little bit down, but not really. But the heel is, can actually articulate separately as well, in two places. Mostly for transformation, but you get the idea. Alright, so that's it for robot mode. I believe, I don't think there's any other articulation that you'll need to worry about. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy transformed from robot to alt mode. So robot to alt mode is uh, pretty cool. Uh, they have a lot of cool things going on. DX9 typically has some uh, interesting transformations going on. So let's actually go ahead and get started with the hands. So the first thing we'll do, just to show you how it works, is you come back and pull this section of the pipes, I guess, exhaust, whatever you want to call it, uh, and fold that up, that on tabs here. And just to comment really quickly, I don't know how they chrome this, but this feels amazingly solid, like no kind of vac metal that I've felt before. This feels like it would never chip off at all. It feels really, really solid. Uh, I, I just can't explain it, but it feels like the best chrome I've ever felt before. All right, and I, I don't love chrome, but uh, this one just feels really, really, really solid. So you pull out the side, for, side of the form like so, and then you're gonna rotate it up. You'll get it around and get that pipe around in that peg and then you can collapse it a bit. Then the fist you're going to want to rotate oh, rotate it 180 degrees so it's backwards and then flip it up on that hinge and we're done with that hand so let's go ahead and do the same on this side again flip this up and untab it 
bring out the forearm on that post, rotate it around and get that tabbed in there, and then rotate the fist 180 and rotate that up. Okay, uh, the next thing we'll go ahead and do is uh, let's deal with the backpack first. So we'll spread open the two arms. They're tabbed in here. So un just untab that. And then you can untab the chest like so. There's tabs here. And then you can start dealing with the backpack. So the backpack comes out. It has two pieces that kind of form part of the upper body. You can rotate that all the way around. You can pull this out for now. And then we're going to rotate this up and back. And we're going to rotate this up for now. And, and you'll see that this is on a sliding joint. You can extend that. Um, wait, was it extended before? I think it was extended before. You want to colla collapse it now. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and bring up the shoulders. And you'll actually, instead of just bringing them up like they were like this, you actually have to bring up the double hinge part here as well. So you're going to want to bring that all the way up and combine the two halves. There's a tab there. And the arms will kind of sit like so. And then this section with the hood will go ahead and come down around that. There's tabs on each side with corresponding slots. You can just tab that in like that. And that's really it for the front. The back is where it kind of gets a little bit cooler. We're going to go ahead and come to the lower body. First thing we'll do is fold up the heel twice and get that tucked in. Come on Henry. So you pull up from the foot like that and then you rotate it like so. All right. Then the legs that are left, you pull out the outer part and extend it fully. And then rotate at the thighs. Like so. And you can just keep the toes however you'd like facing forward. From here what you're going to do is bend at where the, uh, not the elbow, the knee was. Bring that all the way around. Up here you'll see a tab and a slot. You're going to bring that in like so. Same thing on the other side. And now you have the framework of the car. And the rest of everything pretty much just is a shell that will cover all this up. So speaking of that shell, you're going to pull this up like that and fold this down. That completes the top and the back of the cab. This you're going to fold up and out. And that's going to come around. But let's do that slowly so you guys can see what we're going to mess with. So there are a couple tabs that you're going to be concerned with. There's one here and one here. And they have corresponding pieces here and here. I think that should be right for that one, right? Oh, um, also this is the this is the tab you're going to work with, it's the tab slot. You're going to fold this out and up like that. Fold this out and down. And this is the tab that's going to go into that slot. Sorry about that. I'm all confused today. That in here, this one will fold on top of that there. And this one will go in here. So there's a lot of different tabs that are going to come around. The thing I like to do first is take care of the front. Uh, you want to get this, these wings kind of in 
so that these pipes cover that. Same thing on this side. You just kind of tuck those pipes in so that they connect. And then you kind of kind of have to feel your way to some of the uh, all these tabs just because they're hidden for the most part and you don't really get a good view of everything. So just kind of feel your way through these tabs. Just tucked in there. Straighten this out. Make sure that this tab's in. It's there. And that tab's in there, eventually. Same thing on this side. Make sure that wing tabs in. That tabs into the leg. You can kind of see it from the rear, but it honestly doesn't help all that much. You just kind of, again, have to feel your way through some of these tabs. And for the most part, that should be it. And then you're going to want to fold this one in so it sits between the two legs. This kind of sits in. And then there's also tabs on the back that have corresponding slots here and here. There we go. And now everything is pretty solid. Just give it a nice squeeze to make sure everything is actually tabbed in. Oh, missed that tab there. That one popped out from earlier. Last but not least, you're gonna to wanna to bring this down. That one goes into these kind of slots here. And this has a small tab and a corresponding slot that you're just gonna fold in like so. And that's gonna fold down and it secures in place. And with that, you have carry in robot mode, uh, alt mode. And just to give you an idea of how tiny this is and compact it is, I'm gonna bring out the Rodimus Prime trailer, uh, the MP9 trailer, which I'm not gonna fully transform just because it's kind of a pain to do. And uh, this should still give you an idea on of the total scale. So he's really, really short and really, really tiny compared to MP9. And that kind of makes sense because most of this trailer is empty. It's a, a battle station. While this one is very much full with um, all the legs and feet and uh, head and everything that made up the robot mode. While... All that is contained within Rodimus here. So they did a really good job um, making this figure really compact. I do think it is small and it doesn't particularly scale well with the other ma ma masterpiece uh, mo uh, alt modes. But it's a space Winnebago so <laughs> there's, there's really no fair or logical comparison in terms of scale in alt mode because it's not a real car but anyway it's a pretty good representation though it does a really good job with the flames on the side um, really really nice chrome I really love the chrome here I, I'm not I'm not gonna stop gushing about the chrome I don't know how they did it but other people other third party and Hasbro need to figure out how they did it and copy that nice translucent blue this is where the flames look really good here with the black outline. Some minimalist paint pulling out the details, yellow and orange. Um, one odd thing about this pre-production sample, again, is I'm sure it's gonna be fixed in the final, is that it's different colors of red on the plastic. This one looks kind of unfinished and more pale, while this one's a little bit darker and a little bit glossier. And the two missing, two missing wheels. It does roll really well though. And these are rubber tires. Some of you are going to like that, some of you are going to hate that. Not really anything new with any kind of option in the fandom. 
Um, people are going to complain about Chrome liking it, not liking it, um, colors, plastics. So rubber tires, I guess, is just one of those items that um, are kind of at the forefront of people's opinions. On the bottom, you don't get a lot of, you know, identity for the robot. You do see the thighs here and the hips, but if you didn't know that those were uh, hips and arms, you probably wouldn't really kind of guess it's a robot. The thighs, maybe. But otherwise, it's a really, really good representation. Um, DX9 has typically gone above average, I think, in terms of transformation and um, just the, the regular modes from robot and alt. They do a pretty good job of encompassing both. You can bring your gun and mount that on this hole here. Whatever transformation you wanted to do. It doesn't sit all that flat just because the handle's a little bit uh, short and it has this weird protrusion here. But overall I do like the uh, alt mode. I do wish it was a little bit bigger but uh, given that it is a good scale in robot mode, they probably could have done too much to make uh, this guy a little bit bigger. But people like mass shifting. Um, but I think this kind of goes in the opposite direction where it's smaller than it should be as opposed to getting bigger um, to the right size. So with that, let's go ahead and transform back very quickly and then finish off with final thoughts. So the first thing I like to do is really go in the opposite direction. So open this up, open this up, flip that up like so. Now we're going to start dealing with um, the sides here. So let's untab both sides. And you just want to reach in to the back and just pull outwards. And that should loosen up most of the tabs. And you can kind of pull this up. That will give you a little more room to work. Then I like to deal with the wings. You can just untab those from the back here and then pull that back and up like so, getting freeing it from those pipes and then collapsing it down. Same thing on this side, just pull, pull it up to free it and then pull up and back, fold that up, fold that flat. There you go. Next, we'll go ahead and fold this all the way up on this kind of double hinge here. Collapse this down like so and fold this back. And then we're going to fold this down. With all that kind of done, you can rotate this if you get the head out of the way. Rotate this in preparation for transformation. Next, pull the legs down on each side, remembering to untab at the front. From here, you're going to want to rotate at the thighs, 180 degrees, so that they're facing the right way. Go ahead and bring this half up and complete the lower leg. Go ahead and rotate this down, make use of these tabs and the slots here, tap that in, same thing on the other side. Uh, one thing that I have trouble with is getting these toes back out, especially since I just cut my fingernails, give me one second. Sorry, I had to find my sputter. I just go in and pull that out like so. Trying to get in here to find a good place to get some leverage and just unfold the heels. Let's rotate this up a bit as well. All right, so the lower lower body's done, essentially. The upper body, what you're gonna do is pull up on the hood so that this slot frees up the shoulders. And you're gonna wanna bring the shoulders down like this and you're gonna rotate them on these pins and tab them in in a little bit like we showed before. Uh, to complete that, you're gonna to wanna to bring 
the chest up on that sliding joint. Bring this all the way down. And then you can bring the head forward as well. Now you're going to need to get the these po points up there. Before you do that, go ahead and tuck this section in. Like so, just that, just those um, orange pieces. Leave this down so you can fold this, this middle section down so you can fold it up and make that butt flap. This one is going to go up on that double hinge and forward. There are going to be tabs on the chest that go into these slots. There we go. And now these tabs here are going to go into these kind of friction tabs there. Like that. There we go. Stand them up real quick. Now you're not going to be able to see everything, so let's go ahead and scoot that up a little bit more. And last but not least, finishing off the hands. So go ahead and rotate the fist down and around. And also pull out the, the pipes from that tab here. Rotate it 90 degrees. Collapse that down. And then last but not least, fold this back, these pipes back down and tab right into there. Then you have the arms done. Same thing on the other side, just rotate that around. Oh, you need to get this fist out of the way first. Collapse that down. And fold that into place. And with that, you have Carrie back in robot mode. Real quickly, since we have Firebolt, let's do the same thing. Depending on which position you had them in, we'll just go from here. I go ahead and take these wings off first. Kind of straighten them out. Straighten him out if you had them in the other mode first. Just unpeg the fists. Get rid of the barrel at the front. And the biggest thing here, oh, well, let's get this feet out of the way. This foot out of the way. Biggest thing here is you're going to fold them back in half. Just make sure to tilt this arm like that to free up this tab and then you'll be able to fold it down. This peg will go into that peg hole and that is what really holds most of the body together. This foot will help, should have already been completed depending on how you transformed it. This one you just have to kind of put into place here. This big circular section goes into here. It doesn't peg in tightly it just kind of is a placeholder and then rotate the fist around correctly. So that the holes are facing forward. Go ahead and do whatever you want with this gun. And then um, go ahead and get those fins and plug them into these little sl uh, peg holes in the back. And there we have Firebolt back in robot mode. Uh, one odd thing that I just noticed um, is that he does have light piping. It's very hard to see, but you can see it catches some dark blue. That is translucent, and that is for the eyes. And let me see if I can shine a light through here. There we go. Can you guys see that? Okay. Maybe, maybe not. I'm trying to do it so you're not get blinded by that light. There we go. So yeah, you can, you do get some light piping, but it's so dark that it's even hard to see. I didn't even notice it until just now. So we're discovering that together. I rather, I prefer painted eyes if it's going to be dark like that. But yeah, let's get Firebolt out of the way. Bring Carrie back. Well, actually, let's just bring them both in and uh, finish up with final thoughts. So my final thoughts are that this is a really solid figure overall. Um, this is a pre-production sample, so there are some things that I hope they improve on. Um, one is the chest here. Some people are complaining that the flame here is outlined in black, but the top of the flames are not. And it does break up the look of the chest. And the chest, chest does look a little small, I will say that. Uh, I, I definitely um, prefer a little bit wider chest, and maybe that would have made the car alt mode look a little bit bigger if the hood was a little bit bigger. Uh, the other 
uh, aesthetics that I talked about, I, I think I covered pretty well. The only other thing I'll comment on is that I don't really like the flames on the back here. Uh, I really would have liked it to be one solid yellow color on on all sides. But that's not a terrible thing. You're probably going to display him facing forward anyway. But that's just my kind of nitpick. Overall, I think he's a very solid figure. Um, the weird different color plastic that I pointed out before, uh, which is actually inside here, that felt a little bit softer than the rest of the red plastic, but I think that was uh, just one of those pre-production sample things that once they uh, make that consistency more like the other red that you see here, this red is pretty solid. So I, I wouldn't have too many concerns about uh, damaging your figure or anything like that. Again, nice inclusion of the Target Master, but I, I don't really care for it all that much. But hopefully, uh, it will be a nice addition to your your uh, your collection, and it can mess with some of your like Legends class or something like that, or your cassettes. Yeah, actually, it'd be perfect size to combat the cassettes. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. If I miss anything, let me know as well. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share on YouTube and on Facebook. If you want to keep up to date with all my news and reviews, you can go ahead and click the subscribe button up here. Or you can like my page on Facebook, uh, Pig for Life Reviews. And as always, if you want to add this guy to your collection, go ahead and click on the description. Uh, there will be a link for Toy Dojo where you can go ahead and order this guy. He's going to be in stock pretty shortly. And as always, um, I really appreciate you guys keeping up with my reviews. Hopefully I'll be doing a lot more to make up for that one month hiatus. And yes, the uh, one year giveaway prize winners will be announced pretty shortly. Just finishing up um, compiling that video and results before I announce that. Probably before I head off to TFCon Canada. Alright? So that's all for today everyone. Have a good one.